welcome everybody. This is Coach Mary Medley. I work with professionals, helping them break the cycle of self-defeat and uh, remove them from limiting beliefs brought about by imposter syndrome. Today is a very special day. It is my last show for my season one, but I'm going to be uh, talking to a really amazing woman. Her name is Donna Fairhurst. So let me introduce her. Donna is a life and soul transition coach and the chief evolving officer of Soulful Solutions. She empowers her clients to create powerful pivots through any challenge and live on purpose with creativity and passion, combining psychic abilities, aura imaging, healing energy modalities, and practical tools for daily living. That is tough love in a velvet glove. She empowers her clients to the highest level of awareness here and now. We are glad she's our guest today here on her transformation table. Our topic today is the calm principle. So Donna, welcome. I hope I have done you justice in my introduction. Please tell us a little bit more about yourself. Thank you, Mary. I am so blessed and really pleased to be here. And it's my first experience with StreamYard and I'm amazed at how well it's going already. I'm excited. Um, I've had a long and beautiful life and I've had several deaths during that lifetime. I've had uh, four near death experiences that I know of that I can remember and been told by my angels, guides and guardians that I've had more than that. I'm a very old soul. And in each experience, I came back with new spiritual laws and principles for living in this chaotic world. We live in a space of chaos and incoherence, and it is our God-given creator source, whatever that is for you, mission to create calm and coherence on the earth. And Lord knows we're sadly in need of that these days. Yes, it is true. And even with some of the sad things that are happening, uh, like what happened in, in Na was it in Nashville, uh, with the shooting uh, at the school. And these types of things continue happening. We're seeing the earthquake in Turkey, then the flooding that came after that. There's still a war in the Ukraine. So all these things really do cause um, a lot of dis-ease uh, among people. So, um, Tell me, what is the calm principle? The calm principle is a, a simple framework with which to evaluate or value whether you are living in a space of chaos and coherence or a place of calm and coherence. And it's a way to check in with yourself and see what you're taking in and what you're putting out. You know, in this time of global uncertainty and confusion and fear, we can find peace and calm within. And we're asking ourselves what we can do to decrease our anxiety and our fear and our judgment and our pain. And what I've learned through my life and through living and creating these principles is that if we are in a place of judgment, any kind of judgment about a person, place, thing, or situation, we are living in the energy of chaos, confusion, fear, shame, blame, guilt, all of the above. Um, we've trudged through a pandemic for the past two years. There's ongoing you know, violence and war on the planet. Anxiety is a physical and energetic state of mind and emotion. And it's born of what I call the top four, blame, shame, guilt, and fear. And when we're in the place of blame, shame, guilt, or fear, the only energy we can create is more chaos and incoherence, which feeds the field of infinite unity that collects us all. And it feeds into the negative environments that continue to increase because just like plugging in your toaster for electricity or plugging in your car to get gas, um, we are plugged into the universal energy and everything that we think, see, feel, and do 
has a direct impact on the field of our planet, our connection, and our universe. And there's a purpose to this. We are born to be the light. We're born to be the leaders in our own life and then to help others in theirs. So that's our purpose when we come in as a soul. And purpose is not your occupation. It's not your family. It's not your community. It is the energetic outcome you create from choosing to be with purpose, on purpose, wherever you are, whomever you're with, whatever is happening, whenever it's happening. So just think about some of the chaotic things. There are mass murders around the planet. There are still illnesses in many countries. The pandemic is just switched gears and there's still uncertainty around how that's gonna proceed in the world. So the degree to which we are aware of our words and the power behind them whether we're talking to ourselves or others, it really shapes our reality and the ability to manifest the outcomes we desire in that manner that's in the highest good of all concerned. So I always start with purpose because purpose is what leads us to dig into calm and the principle of calm. So as I've said, each, each word that is part of these principles has an energy. Each, each uh, word is broken down into its individual unit, the letters of the unit, and each letter has energy. So with purpose, the P equals calm, peace, repose, freedom from war, quietness of the mind and soul. The U equals unity, which is a state of harmony when we are one with all. The R equals reality, real existence. What is now? Not pie in the sky yesterday or tomorrow. What are we doing? How are we being here now? The P equals patience and perseverance. And Lord knows we need those two qualities to create the endurance to get through the times that we're in and bring better times to our, our place of being. The O equals observation. The action of noticing what is happening now and what we are contributing to what is happening. The S stands for synthesis, putting it all together, deciding what your reality is, choosing to find value in even the most difficult situation. And that brings us to the E, which is four different components. It's endurance, the power to endure what's happening elevation to rise above it and evolution to develop unfold and expand and then experience being affected consciously by an event or a knowledge when we understand the energies of purpose we can live from calm coherently rather than chaos and incoherence we do this as a state of being that is a choice i like to to feel that we are brought to this planet, to this universe, to be a being, a human being. The reason we're called human being is because we are to be the best that we can be wherever we are, whatever we're doing, whoever we're with. If we are not doing that, we're doing. So we're either being or doing. When we're being, we're growing and shining and sharing our light. When we're doing, we're doing and doing and doing, spinning our wheels, and generally we end up with a lot of doo-doo that we have to fix. It's a choice we can make right now to do one thing that contributes to serve to peace in the world. You know, donate clothing, money, time, space, whatever you have that you can share or spare. What and how can you best contribute to the community where you are now? So when we understand the purpose of our being, we can then decide, are we living in a place of calm and coherence or a place of chaos and incoherence? So I like to break it down, the elements, just like I did with purpose. So let's break down calm. What is calm? The C equals clarity, communication, choice, cooperation, and coherence. The A equals awareness, attention, 
alignment and action. The L equals listen, lean in, learn, be willing to take a leap, live large, and most of all, laugh and love. And the M equals meaningful. And I mean meaning F-U-L-L. -L. The calm principle is why I call my company Soulful Solutions. We can fill our soul. We can fill our mind, our body with the good things, meaningful, mindful things, and manifest miracles from creating this state of calm and coherence in our life. We as human beings live, you know, from four quadrants of our existence, mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And we need to be using all four of those elements. Um, I think you can hear that my voice is getting quite gravelly and low. And that's, yes. just, I'm not sick or anything. That's just an indication that spirit is in and moving through me to connect with your energies and there is an alignment happening here in the field of infinite unity to share the quantum leap that we're bringing with this teaching. So pardon my voice and, and let's just go forward. Um, Mary, I'd no like problem. to tell you that your grandfather, your mother's father is here for you in this moment. Oh, okay. And he is a, a power to be reckoned with. And he is bringing you um, joy and peace and purpose, and he loves what you're doing. That's just a side note. We'll talk later about that's, that. That's yeah. amazing to hear. <laughs> and you can hear he's really trying to take, this is what I call being jumped. He's taking over my voice. So It's, in, it's interesting. I don't think I, I've ever met him. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> he's, he's been with you in many lifetimes, in many different relationships, and he's a powerful powerful leader from the other side. Um, and he had many challenges in his life that led him to finding the calm principle. And that's why he's jumping in here on this. So okay. we operate as a human doing or a human being. In the human doing, we are operating from the ego mind map. In the human being, we're operating from the heart or soul map. So if we're living in a doing state of mind rather than a being state of mind, we are creating chaos, which equals incoherence. We're doing that because we're evaluating ourself, others, or a situation. When we're in a state of evaluation, we're in judgment. When we're in judgment, we can't be anything but incoherent. That is all about creating more problems because you can't create a solution from a place of judgment. Judgment is quite seriously a human construction. I learned in my near-death experiences that on the other side in the field of infinite unity, there is absolutely no judgment. There is only love and understanding. Judgment is a human condition and it creates more problems than it solves. And it's entirely ego-based. When we're in ego-based judgment, evaluating a person, place, or thing, we compromise our integrity, our heart space. And when we compromise that heart space, the cycle repeats. We're in a state of management of our problems. And that management just creates more space of shame, blame, guilt, and fear. And being in a place of shame, blame, guilt, or fear just rolls over into more chaos and incoherence. And the cycle goes around and around and around. We can stop ourselves by just leaning and listening to our heart, leaning into our heart soul map. In the heart, we can create calm by just taking a breath, a simple breath, and feeling and listening to our own heartbeat. Therein lies coherence. When we're in coherence, we take whatever the situation is that's causing us chaos, and we look for the value. We do not evaluate. We look for the value. Whatever is happening, however challenging it may be in the moment, if we cannot find value, in a lesson that we're learning in that very difficult moment, we can't create a space of calm. We need to find value in ourselves, 
in others, in the person, place, or situation that's in front of us. Now, we can only come to a state of valuation if we choose to be aligned with non-judgment. That's a really big leap of faith for human beings. Non-judgment, because we are taught to judge from the cradle. We are taught whatever our discipline, whatever our religious beliefs or lack thereof, we are taught to live in a state of judgment from the cradle rather than non-judgment. When you're in a place of judgment, you're creating problems. When you're in a place of non-judgment, you're creating soulful solutions. That's why I called my company Soulful Solutions, because I know that that's the way to create miracles in your life. When you're in a place of creating soulful solutions from a place of non-judgment with heart-based cooperation, the cycle of joy, the cycle of calm, the cycle of coherence repeats. And we manifest, we can manifest miracles every day in our life. And, you know, actually just waking up and taking a breath every morning is a miracle. Thank you. Thank you for that, that I'm here to breathe, that I'm here to speak, that I'm here to share from the heart. This is my joy and purpose today with you. And when you manifest from that, that state of heart, that state of mind, you connect your ego mind map with your heart soul map. And in that space, you create sacred soul self. Your mind and your heart are working together, joined at the heart chakra in that space, in valuation, non-judgment, heart-based cooperation. And the cycle repeats. In that space, we learn to know ourselves. We learn to grow ourselves. And we learn to flow like a beautiful river. With, with all of the energy of the universe behind us. And from that space, we begin to raise our light, to shine our light brighter. And when we shine that light, we glow, and we can attract more of that light to us. And the more of that light we attract to us, we share the light with more. And it's a self-fulfilling prophecy in a way. It's the only way that you can be in common coherence. So in that space, you need to create some, some mantras or some, I call them songs for living for yourself, whatever affirmations, mantras, you know, joyful statements that you can create for yourself and share with others, the better it's going to be. Do you, do you have any questions about what I've said so far, Mary? I do. Um, I wanted to know, um, you've talked about uh, judgment and incoherence and uh, the existence of love and understanding, especially on the other side, on the spirit side. And I guess my question then is, when it's really difficult when you have someone who is bad or, or mean or who acts evil around you, it's hard to not judge that person or to have love and understanding for them. How can you separate yourself from their actions towards you so that you are leaning in without judgment? Because that's really difficult when you have a negative energy of a person, a being living, um, that is taking the peace, taking the joy, taking the love away from you. How would you advise uh, in a situation like that? If you cannot have and find value in the relationship with a person, place, or thing, my question would be, if you are in a place of violence or upheaval or feeling judged or judging, why have you chosen to be in that space? It's a choice. Everything that we do in life is a choice, good, bad, or indifferent. And it's how we clarify what is important to us, how we clarify and communicate with everyone we interact with, 
what is acceptable and not acceptable in our life. It's setting clear, healthy boundaries of how you want to live and be. And everybody's person and place and situation is different. And there are many, many people in the world mired in what they feel are non-ending difficult relationships, uh, jobs, uh, re uh, you know, families that have difficult problems, and then mired also within their countries and their towns and their cities. Uh, you know, Canada is one of the greatest places in the world to live. And yet, you know, you mentioned, you know, pre just in our chat before the show about the, the murders in Nashville of the children and teachers and, and staff. And in, in my own country last year, we had a mass murder of 22 people in Nova Scotia, which is one of the um, most beautiful and, and peaceful and loving places to live in our country. And it was, it was gutting and soul destroying for everyone in the country to, 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 to know and realize that this could happen here. And today, this morning, we were listening to, I was listening early on this morning to a commission that has spent the last year since this tragedy studying very, very seriously where the breakdown was in in policing and in in awareness around the man that committed these murders and how it all happened and it was a very very terrible thing and beautiful people lost their lives from a spiritual perspective from my state of being and what i know to be true at the soul level, these people chose to be victims to raise the awareness that murder and mayhem cannot and must not be accepted. That violence, whether it is within a family, within relationships, within a community, cannot and will not be accepted. And there must be ways, laws, uh, purposely brought into alignment with awareness and attention so that we can take action to create a better environment. If you are living in a playoffs, a place of, of chaos and incoherence, you may feel there's nothing you can do about it. That too is a choice. A choice is to stay or to go. Either may be very, very hurtful and feel very harmful. And yet, how do you want to live your life in the time that you have? I would ask seriously, why would you tolerate violence, mayhem, destruction in your life in any way, shape, or form? And if that is in your life, what can you do? What can you choose to change the situation? Whom do you need to talk to? Where do you need to ask for help? With your neighbors, with your church, with your family? There's a way. You have to be the leader of your path. You have to be the leader in your own life. Otherwise, you are choosing deliberately to be the victim, and that will continue as long as you allow it to. Does that make sense? You met. It it, it does make sense. Uh, you have to have your own agency and you own your decisions. Yeah. I, my question is, you had touched on your near-death experiences, but would you tell us a bit more about how those experiences and those struggles led you to the calm principles? Tell us about your journey. Well, it's very interesting, Mary. I was born uh, technically legally blind, and my parents didn't find out until I was 12 years old that I was that way. Um, I also had polio at the age of one, and uh, it severely limited my, my way of being and doing and learning for a, for a long time. I was born being able to see the light in everyone. Everyone, you know, you know what you look like to me right now? You look 
like a beautiful Christmas tree and both of your, all of your lights are shining mm -hmm. and the lights are predominantly pink and orange and yellow. You are very invested in teaching within your family, your tribe, your, your state of being. You're highly creative. You have this orange juiciness around you, which means you're meant to communicate in a sensitive, artistic way. And you have a, a huge, huge blue, sky blue throat chakra, which says you're meant to, to communicate by speaking through and with others. And that's what you're doing here today. So you are actually leaning very purposely into your purpose. I um, don't remember my first near-death experience. My parents told me about it. It happened during multiple spinal taps uh, when I had the polio at age one. I was gone for several minutes. When I came back, um, I was just one, so I, I, could, I had no way to express what I experienced. What I know now from seeing a life review from the other side was that I was told that at, later in my life, I would remember all of this and it would all come back through another experience. You know, many, many years went by. I was, I was channeling spirit. My parents were very uncomfortable and very afraid of it. They, they thought I might be going crazy because I would talk about seeing angels and talking with angels and seeing guides and guardians and talking with them. My mother actually took me to a child psychologist when I was, you know, sometime around 11, 10, 11 to uh, be evaluated. And, and uh, he, he suggested hypnosis. Um, he told her I wasn't crazy. I was communicating with something that we, they could not see or, or be aware of. It wasn't anything to be afraid of. And I would probably outgrow it, <laughs> which is really kind of funny. because I, I never outgrew it. I grew into it. I grew <laughs> up with it. What I did though, at that time, you know, your, your, your tribe that you, that you are born into <coughs> with, um, affects everything you do think and be as a child. And so when something that you do or you are makes other people uncomfortable as a child, you tend to shut it down. You either act out with it or you shut it down. I was a very quiet and introspective and, and, uh, inverted child. Ex it, yeah, inverted. I don't know if that's the right word. Um, and so I didn't speak about it anymore. I literally shut it down. And then they found out about my sight when I was 12. And they were able with surgery and, you know, Coke bottle thick glasses to correct my, my vision. And that opened up a whole world that I had never seen before. If things were up close to me, within three feet of me, I could see them. If they were more than three feet away, it was just a, a blur of color to me. So mm -hmm. it was like discovering the earth for the first time. And so I lived in, in earth purpose for uh, quite a while until I was in my uh, late twenties. And in my late twenties, I uh, had a near death experience during emergency surgery. And I was in Singapore at the time living in Singapore. And I found myself on the other side. And I was to be truthful, quite terrified uh, when I arrived. And yet all I could feel was this beautiful, beautiful pink white light. It was like being bathed in a sauna of love. Um, the, there was a sensation of warmth, but not heat. There was a sensation of absolute total love. Um, I didn't see anything or anyone in that experience. I just received the message that I was there to feel the love, to know that we all come from love, that, this, that where we come from is only love, and that um, I would feel it for some time and be, be a vehicle for it in my near future. So, you know, when I woke up, my doctor was sitting there and he said, um, I, I was in the uh, recovery room and he said, you've had quite a journey, haven't you? Because apparently when I was coming out of the anesthetic, I was just babbling to everybody uh, in, the, in the recovery room that, you know, I had been to God and all there was with love and, and we needed to be love. And, and um, I didn't remember the specific experience I just felt it. It was it was in me. 
And I knew that it was in all of us. We just had to become aware that we are a vehicle that came here to be love in everything we do. And if we align ourselves with awareness and love and we live from that space, that is our superpower. That is the gift, the God-given gift of, of being a human. It's to experience, express, and live from, through, and with love for all that is. Now, if we all did that for just 15 minutes today, we could change the whole dichotomy of the earth in one day. If, if everyone just energetically held hands for 10 minutes, and was in a space of love, think how that would change. What would happen? You know, it's a scientific fact. If nine people align their energies, they affect 90 people. If 90 people align their energies, they affect 90,000 people. If 90,000 people align their energies, they can stop traffic in New York. It, it, it can be done. We are energetic beings. We just have to realize the God-given tools that we have. And it starts with love. It starts with calm. It starts with living from your sacred soul self. And you don't need a near-death experience to do it. You don't need to die and go to the other side to feel and be this. I feel really blessed that I've had multiple experiences. The second time... I went again, I mean, I don't do well with anesthetic and surgery. Every time I have an oral anesthetic, I die. It's just, it's what happens. So I don't do it anymore. If I have to have surgery now, I have a spinal. And I figured that's the way to stay here. However, with those experiences, the second one, um, I was shown um, how to value all of the terrible things that had happened in my life and how to value what I had always considered terrible things that, that I had done. Um, and it feels so different from, from that perspective. When you have, you are shown, when you pass over, you're shown a life review. You're not shown, how do I explain this? You are shown all of the interactions you had that changed people's lives in either a negative or a positive way? What were the results for yourself and other people that came from you acting from a place of love or acting from a place of anything that was not love? Whether it was anger, whether it was alienation, when you were living from a place of shame, blame, guilt, or fear, there is no place for for love. There is no place to know or to grow or to flow or to glow. So that brings you right back to square one. And I came back from that experience knowing that I had to learn more about the principle of love and I had to learn, lean into peace in all of my actions. And at that time, I was going through a terrible divorce. I was suicidal. I was definitely not living from a place of calm and coherence. And then I had another near-death experience 10 years later. And that's when it all came into perspective. The principles started dropping in and I started to really live from them. And when I started to live from them in my personal space, everywhere I was, every time, with everyone, my life changed overnight. The job I needed came to me. The home I needed came to me. The calm and the coherence within me allowed me to express and communicate with clarity to create cooperation, to live from coherence, to be aware, to be attentive, to listen, to align, and then to take action. Take action from what was love-based alignment. 
And that made everything in my life more meaningful. It made me more mindful of my words and my choices. And from that, I was able to manifest miracles in my life and help other people to see the miracles in their life. And that's my mission now, to just share it with as many people as I can. So, Donna, you have, you've talked about your near-death experiences. And I guess I have uh, three questions <laughs> at this stage. Number one, uh, you've talked about your experiences as a child and all the hardships that you went through leading up to you having this near-death experiences, which opened up a spiritual journey. So my first question is, I haven't had a near-death experience, so how would I be able to be awakened? Uh, how would I be able to be aware that uh, I need to have more focus on my spiritual journey? And second question, I don't know if you had religion in your family, you know, were, were your family members Christians, religiously going to church? Were they Buddhist? What were they doing? Oh, they didn't have religion at all. And I ask that because if someone is following a particular religion and they find themselves in this spiritual awakening, um, how do they deal with that conflict, especially if it doesn't match what they have been conditioned to believe? Um, yeah, basically, how does one know they are awakened or they need awakening? We all are born to wake up in our own time through our own journey and our experiences and challenges. Every challenge is an opportunity to create awareness and make a new choice. Um, my family was, was very spiritually diverse. My father came from a French-Canadian uh, Catholic, Roman Catholic family, a, a very large family. And my mother was an only child from a Protestant uh, church denomination, from a Protestant denomination. And so when they met and married, they had a, a very, very, some similar but quite diverse ways of practicing their religious and spiritual beliefs. And, you know, they were way ahead. I I'm, am so blessed to have the parents that I had because even though our family life was very challenging on a number of dimensions, it gave us the opportunity to grow and know so much more. And my parents agreed very early on in our, our lives, um, even before they had children, that um, should they be blessed with children, they would raise them with the knowledge that all spiritual practice leads to God. It doesn't matter what road you travel. It only matters that you travel the road and you listen with your heart. And coming from that kind of space, um, we went to many multiple churches. Our, our parents would kind of do this month on month off thing where one month we would go to the United Church or the Baptist Church. and The next month we would go to the Catholic Church and then Every once in a while, we would pop into a church that we were completely unfamiliar with, um, a Sikh temple, uh, a Buddhist temple, um, uh, uh, a Jewish uh, synagogue. There, and, and they had many, many friends from, from many diverse religions, and they were very down to earth. My mom used to say about my dad, he's real as dirt. And I, I just love that saying, because what is realer than the earth that we stand on? Mm -hmm. And he was that kind of man. And my mother was, uh, and he wasn't well educated, but he, however, he was life smart. He was truly life and earth smart. He could talk to the animals. He could call them in. He was a very good judge of character and people. And he believed in laughter and living fully. My mom was really... Um, educated and uh, had extremely high principles and values for living. And her favorite saying was, if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing well, or don't do it at all until you know how. If you don't know how, find a teacher and learn it. So 
um, we grew up with a very opened mindset. And I have a brother and a sister. I'm the oldest of three. And each one of us lives from a very, very different spiritual dimension. And yet we all agree unanimously on the fundamentals of what a spiritually evolved life looks like. And we live from that. It's not about the religion per se. It's how you live the principles of love from wherever you are, whoever you're with, whatever you're doing. My caveat is if you are coming from judgment and judgment results in retribution, you can only create more judgment. So spiritual doctrines evolve with spiritual people. So as we listen and we lean in and we study what is actually being said behind the scriptures of whatever religion we're practicing from, we have to lean into our heart. And it's not about thinking about something. It's not about intellectualizing something. It's not about taking it as God's gospel. It's about being in alignment with what is truth for you, putting that into your heart and feeling it's not about saying, what am I thinking about this person, place, or thing? It's about, what am I feeling about this person, place, or thing? Does this feel in alignment with my principles? Does this feel in alignment with the way I want to live my life? Is this doing no harm to another person, place, or thing? Is this creating a better situation for all of us? Or is it creating chaos? And it's pretty simple. Take a step forward to the calm. Take a step back from the chaos. It, it's hard. We have to learn it. And until we learn it and be it, we're just going to have more chaos in the world. This is true. Um, you have talked, you've mentioned uh, my chakras and I have personally never tried to open them or to study them. I know very little to nothing about them. So tell us about the auric field, the chakras, and how to clear them, how to strengthen them. What is the process? Okay, so I want you all that are listening to picture that you are the yolk in the center of a human egg. You, you are an egg. There's a field of energy around you that is like the shape of an egg. And around the outside of that egg is a circle of white light surrounding it that protects you. Within the egg, within the field, your mind, body, soul exists. In that field, in, within your body and above and outside of your body, are energy centers. Each one of those energy centers corresponds to different uh, parts of your spiritual energy and different parts of your physical energy. Your physical energy is controlled by your mind. Your spiritual energy is controlled by your emotions. And they have different components that are supposed to work together. We all have chakras, no human being, no animal, no piece of grass, no leaf on the tree. Everybody has an energy, everybody, everything. Even this cup has an energy field from the things that it's made of. If I took an aura image of this cup, you would see the breakdown of the steel and the plastic in the top. I've, I've imaged plants, I've imaged animals, I've imaged thousands of people. Everybody's energy is different. The energy is smaller or bigger depending on what is happening in their life. The chakras are connected to specific organs. I'm just going to get a little chart here. Um, there it is. So if we start at the top of our head, the crown chakra, this is where light comes into the very top of the center of our head, directly from God, creator, source, whatever that is for you or not. There is 
beautiful lavender white energy pouring through the top of your head, through your egg. All the energy that comes from source can permeate the egg. You can create a, an eggshell. You know how an egg has an eggshell around itself? Well, you can yeah. create a line of protection around your field by strengthening your chakras by what you say, how you think, what you eat, who you align with, what you actions you take in your life, either create a stronger field or a weaker field. If you strengthen the field, you strengthen every organ. So you have a crown chakra at the top of your head, a third eye chakra. So crown chakra is where... God energy comes in from our angels, from God, from our guides and guardians on the other side, from your grandfather that I talked about. That comes in here through the top of our head and through the back of our head and goes out through the front of our head and down through our body. We have a chakra in the middle of our forehead. It's called our third eye. This is where we receive messages and align with the messages that our guides, guardians, God, and angels are trying to send us here on this earth. Then we have the throat chakra. And it's a really beautiful sky blue, like I told you, you have around your throat. And mm -hmm. it's where we communicate. It is all of that we take in in communication from other people and all of the ways that we communicate our truth or not to other people. Then we have our heart chakra. That is the biggest, most important chakra in our body. It is beautiful emerald green. It puts out a green light. And in the very center of it is a pink. People have described it as a lotus. The Buddhists describe it as a lotus. It's like a large pink flower in the center of your heart. And within the center of that is a space of pure white light. That pure white light is your soul. That is where your soul lives in your body. When you come in... When, when you are created, you are a fetus. And around about the third or fourth month, your soul comes into your body. You know this because that is generally when the mother first feels the movement of a child. When you feel that movement, the soul is in alignment. It's in the body. Then that goes down from there to the solar plexus. The solar plexus is in your abdomen, halfway between your rib cage and your belly button. And that's beautiful yellow, sunshine yellow. That's where your body is connected to your heart and your soul. And it's also connecting to the lower chakras, to the earth. So from the belly button a lot above is our spiritual, emotional, um, religious, if you want to call it that, alignment. From the belly button down is our connection to the earth and everything that is human. So the first chakra we come to below our belly button is our sacral chakra, and it's the, the seat of creation. It is the where, where we get all of our creative energies. And, you know, people think when you talk about creativity that it's like you're an artist or a singer or you're, you know, you're doing something dancing. Um, anything that we create, whether it's, you know, baking a pie, writing a, a song, uh, talking um, passionately about something. This is creation. We are creating every time we take a breath, we're creating something. And so this is a very important energy center. And um, it's, it's our juiciness. It's where our sensual side comes from. And when it, it's also a part of our sexuality, but it is not um, sexuality per se. It's how we experience and interpret what we feel in the world. It's our feeling chakra. And then we go down to the root chakra, which is located, you know, midway between our pubic bone and our tailbone. And that connects through our legs down to the earth. And it's a beautiful, vibrant ruby red. And we're constantly sending energy through our system, through the top of our head and the back of our body down through our body to the earth that energy goes down into mother earth and and just like vacuuming your house or sweeping your house clean mother earth takes our energy through all of the layers of the earth down into the molten center she cleans it she clears it and she sends it back up and it doesn't matter whether we're a human being or a blade of grass mother earth is cleaning and clearing us to the best of her ability at all times so I like to think of this as father in the sky and mother in the earth, holding hands in the center of our body to create 
whatever health, love, joy, peace we live in alignment with. These are connected to different organs in our body. Each chakra is connected to a different organ in our body. The crown chakra is connected to the crown chakra is connected to our penile glands, to our hair, our head, our central nervous system. And on the mental emotional side, that's about our compassion, our oneness with all, seeing ourselves and others, allowing us to be non-attached and to be loving and non-reactive. In our third eye brow chakra, the deep, deep indigo blue one, that's our pituitary gland, our hypothalamus, our eyes, and our autonomous nervous system. On the emotional side, it is our, our visualization, our clairvoyance, our choices for the good of all. It's where we develop our psychic awareness. And everyone has psychic awareness. It's how we tune in to ourself and to the universe. And it's about healing, especially healing addictions and choosing to be in service. Um, our throat chakra, it's about our thyroid, our parathyroid, our ears, our respiratory system, and uh, uh, all of the things like sinuses and allergies, that kind of thing. And on the, on the emotional heart side, it's about open, clear communication. How do we speak our thoughts? How are we speaking up and, and releasing and breathing? And uh, the life force of our body is, is our breath. Uh, our heart chakra is, as I said, emerald green. It's about our thymus, our lungs, our heart, our blood pressure, our lymphatic, and our immune system. On the emotional side and our body, it's about creating harmony and trust and lovingness. It's the ability to receive um, without giving and to give without having to receive. It's coping with all that is in a manner that's in the highest good of all concerned. Our solar plexus is that beautiful sunshine yellow, and it's about our pancreas, our stomach, our liver, our small intestine, our blood sugar, and our digestion, all things stomach. It's also on the emotional mental side of it, it's about our energy, our balance, how we balance our willpower and control of ourself versus others' willpower and control over us. It's about moving from a state of believing to a state of knowing what is true for you. It's about examining the beliefs that were imprinted on you from your family, your tribe, your church, and choosing what is a knowing for you. From that space with these lessons, what do you know to be truth for you? And then living from that truth. And it's about eliminating self-critical thoughts and the ideas of perfectionism. There is no perfection in the world. It is our mission to create it. It's an ongoing, never-ending process. It's what we came here to do. Our sacral chakra, the orange one, is about our blood uh, sugar, our spleen, our ovaries, our, our uh, um, in males, it would be about the testes, uh, adrenal, uterus, kidney, urinary tract, all of that system. And on the body side, the feelings, it's about emotional needs, uh, defining and setting our boundaries, creating trust and warmth and intimacy in our lives. Um, it's about attachments and letting go of things that no longer serve us, serve us or serve others. Um, and it's about creating pleasure in our life versus addictions and needs versus pleasures and um, balancing our needs and our actions. And then finally, the root chakra. It is about our whole sexual and reproductive system. It's about the testes and the vagina, the perineum, the tailbone, the lower part of the back, your legs, your feet. Um, on the emotional body side, it's basic body needs, how you create safety in your life, how you express your sexuality, how your behavior is grounded, and your lifestyle choices. It's 
really about space and boundaries and honoring those of others. That's a lot to throw into one session. <laughs> yes. Um, how is, is there a danger that you can face uh, opening your chakras? Is it possible to do it wrong? No, your chakras are open. You don't have to do anything. What you need to do is to be aligning yourself with actions that are serving and strengthening rather than actions that take away from them. So you can shrink your chakras, you can weaken your chakras, which in turn weaken the organs they're attached to. Does that make sense? So for, for instance, if you are in your uh, solar plexus, the one in the between the rib cage and the belly button, the beautiful mm -hmm. yellow one. If you're operating mm -hmm. at as hot at this high level, it means you're very connected to your tribe. You're teaching and living from a place of love. You're communicating with your community. You're in service in your community. Your community is in service with you. You are finding value and purpose in your in your work, in your family, and it, and everything is great in your life. If something is not not right in this chakra you're going to have stomach problems you're going to have digestive problems you're going to have um problems with your blood sugar you're going to have liver problems so if you're having any of those issues medical issues in your physical body that's the chakra you need to clear and clean and heal you can do that with meditation you can do that with affirmations you can do that with changing what you eat and drink there's it, it's it's doing all using all of the tools that you have available to you it takes uh, i created in in my practice for myself and now now i use it for for, for all of my clients and my friends and my family i created a, a program called zero to clarity and in it um we discuss we use a toolkit a very very intentional toolkit every day to clean, clear, and grow our chakras to their highest level of awareness. We start with a clearing and manifesting prayer, and then we do an angel invocation, and then we do an affirmation for each one of the chakras to clear, clean, and strengthen them. And then we bring all of that energy back up from the earth, and we take it back up and connect it to spirit. So we are in this beautiful infinite loop of infinite unity and it comes from just being aware if you make a bad choice you can take an affirmation to, to change the energy up and take a step in the right direction does that make sense yes that makes sense um how has society or immediate society responded to to the calm principle and such types of teachings because i can imagine when you started to tell people, even if it was close friends and family, they must have been like, what are, what are you talking about? <laughs> because not everyone is spiritually at the same place. So what was that reaction like from general society? Um, you know what? I, I haven't had, I, can't, I can honestly say truly uh, from my heart, that it aligns with people that are aligned with growing their spirituality. And it is very um, triggering for people that are living in chaos and incoherence. You know, if, if I tell, um, if I express to someone from a place of love that you need to be love and where you're living from is hate and judgment, they're not going to do it just because I do it. They have to find something with to work with and so i suggest the tools as a way to begin to align yourself and you know some people take it and they use it and they see the difference and some people don't take it and don't use it and therefore there will be no difference it doesn't matter mary whether it's my toolkit whether it's prayers that you've been taught in your in in your religious upbringing or lack thereof um you need connection to source. You need a connection to God. And you do that with whatever that is, God, source, creator. And even if you don't, haven't been taught to connect with your infinite source of love, if you're connected to the earth and you honor the earth, 
sooner or later, if you do the right things by the earth and the people on the earth, whether you believe in God or not, if you speak with clarity, if you communicate with love, if you make good choices, if you cooperate to create service in your community and in your outer world, if you live from coherence and awareness and attention and alignment and you take action from that, you will listen to people. You will lean in. You will learn. You will take leaps of faith. You will live larger. And you'll laugh a whole lot more. And you'll experience a whole lot more love. And when you're in that space, that's when everything has meaning. That's when you become full of new ideas and ways to live your life. And in that space, in that space, you become the manifester in your life. And you manifest miracles, big and small. And it's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful place to live because no matter what shows up, you know that you have the ability to give love to the situation. And it doesn't mean, you know, be silly. If a man is coming at you with a knife, you're not going to stand there and say, I love you and I'll take the knife. You're going to get out of the way. You're going to, that's, see, you know, this is when you use your ego map, your brain, I, I call, I call it, you know, when it's not working well, I call it the monkey mind. And when I when it's working well, I call it beautiful, sacred ego soul, ego soul self. Because mm -hmm. the ego, your mind, has one job and one job only. That is to keep you safe. And the mm -hmm. ego doesn't like anything that feels fearful, that feels like it's not in control, that feels like um, it's being judged that feels like it's not a safe space to be in, to be myself. So the ego will create judgments and, and actions. And we need that ego. You know, if you see a man coming at you with a knife, your ego is going to say, run in the other direction. And you should. Your ego isn't going to stand there and say, hey, stand here, smile and say, I love you as you get stabbed in the heart, right? Yeah. You have yeah. to be smart about these things it's it's not love and 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 apple pie in the sky it yeah. is living a, a heart-centered loving life on purpose with purpose wherever we are whoever we're with whatever we're doing and allowing our life to flow like a river you know you've seen rivers right yeah and lakes yes maybe. and and a river doesn't ask a river doesn't ask what it's doing. A river just flows. And sometimes it flows underground into underground caves and it feels dark and it feels cold. And sometimes it's a rushing rapids going over a waterfall and there's fear of falling and flying because you're the river water in the air. Yet have you ever seen a waterfall you didn't love? <laughs> No, <laughs> it's impossible to not love a river. It's yeah. impossible to not love a lake. It's impossible to not love a mountain or a field. It's there for us. We are the luckiest creatures in all of the worlds, in all of the universes, because we get to feel and, and live from the experience of living on our beautiful Mother Earth and still being attached to the essence of, of, sacred, of sacred soul, of sacred energy. We know we come from another dimension and we return to another dimension unless we don't believe in, in, in God or spirit. If we've been taught to be you know, a, a non-believer, then it, it, you know, I promise you it doesn't matter anyway because when you die, you're, you don't really die. You dump the body that is the bus that carries you around you leave that behind. You know, when you buy a new car, do you do you get a chain and hold the carry the old car with you? <laughs> no. You dump the car and and you get a new car and you get in and you drive from there. So your yeah. body is the bus, the vehicle that was divinely designed by Creator Source God to be the perfect vehicle to carry our soul around so that our soul could experience the reality of gravity and a human being on earth. 
And we are given all of the beautiful challenges and the successes that we experience through our entire human journey to grow our soul. And then we take those lessons that we learned back into sacred soul, self heaven, whatever you want to call it, the afterlife. And we become a space of pure light and we connect with all of the other lights that we've ever been connected to in any other lifetime and this lifetime. And we either choose to stay there and be a guide and a guardian for other people that were in our lives before, or we choose to come back and have another life. When we come back, for the most part, for the majority of people, we forget the lives that we had before. When we're very young, when we're young children, you know, usually up to about three, four years, we can sometimes get flashbacks and remember different lives. And, you know, I've done a lot of past life regressions now and, and gone back into many of my lives. And each one grew me to the next level. And each life led to the next better life, the next bigger life. And as far as religion goes, through my spiritual journey and my spiritual practices, what I have found is uh, I'm like an omniist, a spiritual omniist. I have learned from each discipline, from Christianity, from Buddhism, from uh, Muslim, from the Quran. I have studied all of the scriptures in all of the disciplines. And at the core, it's be love. Do no harm and be love. And if that's all we did, if we, were, we, if we told our children from birth, do no harm and be love, and we were the model of that, how would our world change? How would we be living now? Would we be having pandemics? Would we be having wars? Would we be, you know, talking nuclear weapons? No. No, it couldn't happen in a space. That's where we need to move to. That's where we need to be living from. And the sooner the better. And we have a whole God squad. Every one of us has a God squad. We have angels. We have guides. We have guardians. We have teachers from the other side. They come to us in dream time. They come to us in prayer. They hear us asking. They hear us calling. What happens is we forget to turn on the listening device, which is our heart. Um, you've talked about reincarnation um, and also do no harm and be love. I wish that everybody would, <laughs> would follow that, as you've said. So is it... Does everybody get reincarnated according to your understanding or are there people who are here for the first time? And second question, who have you learned from? Who have been your teachers in this spiritual journey? Oh, both, both very, very big questions. Um, we choose, as a soul on the other side, my understanding is that um, we evolve much the way uh, human body evolves. We have uh, younger souls. Uh, there are new souls coming in all the time from source. And those souls are on the other side. And there's young and there's middle-aged and there's senior souls and there's master souls. So um, if I was a young child in a Buddhist discipline, I would think of the Dalai Lama as being a master soul, right? He shouldn't probably have to come around too many more times. I would think of Nelson Mandela as being a, a master soul, having a human experience. Um, mm -hmm. I would think of a man like uh, a Neil, Neil Donald Walsh or uh, Wayne Dyer or Shakti Gawain, some of these beautiful people um, having been master souls. So as you grow your soul 
and you go from life to life. You come here, you have your life lesson, you grow your life experience, you go over to the soul, you compare that life experience to other life experiences, you decide what you, where you didn't grow enough. And if you didn't grow enough, you want to go back and have another experience to, to grow that, to learn that, that life lesson, those laws of spirit, live bigger into them. And then you go back there and you have a choice, just like we have schools here, schools on earth and mm -hmm. different schools of thought. There are schools and different schools of thought on the other side. And there are multiple, multiple dimensions, beings from other dimensions also visit there and impart their wisdom. And there is no part of the universe that you do not have access to from that place. So in my first experience, when I died, I went over and I came back. I popped over, I popped back. It was that fast. The second time I went over, I stayed what felt like years to me. And really it was about 12 minutes total. And, and it felt like a whole lifetime to me, the time I was on that side. And I, I met with my father who had passed away. My grandparents were there. And I recognized these beautiful lights that came to me as light that I recognized. And then I saw the human expression of them. So we can create a human expression as a soul on the other side. And we can, ex we can create a soul expression on the human side to the, to the ability, to the, to the extent that we are aware and are willing to study it. Right. Yeah. So, um, one time I was studying meditation and I was at this drumming circle and I was with, with a beautiful, beautiful spiritual drummer called Judy Anderson, and she does drumming meditations. And I relate very powerful to, to drumming. And I was sitting there and there was a, a musician, a fabulous musician that played this type of long, long horn that came from Tibet. And he was doing leading a meditation. And everybody was just so deeply into this. And I was sitting with my husband and I was sitting on this chair and I, I could just feel the light and I could feel the light was rising me up. And, and I didn't realize that I, I was so deep and the power of this meditation was so strong. I actually rose up off my chair. I wasn't physically aware of it because I was in the, in the bus and I was raising the bus that is my body until a woman behind me opened her eyes and said, oh my God, she's levitating. And boom, I came down on my chair. I thought I was gonna break my back, I came down so hard. And yet it was only a few inches. That experience taught me that we have the power to raise our energy, that we have the power to raise our bodies with our energy. And if we can do that, what else is possible? That is true. As, That's far, amazing. as far as teachers go, Mary, mm -hmm. um, one of my very, very uh, earliest and favorite teachers was Wayne Dyer. I recommend reading every book he's ever written, but especially The Power of Intention. And mm -hmm. I love this one, and I got it out just to show you. It's called Wisdom of the Ages. By Wayne Dyer mm -hmm. and what he's done is he literally uh, takes all of the spiritual disciplines and extracts all of the wisdoms and explores all of the similarities and gives you an opportunity to understand how different there are different modalities of synthesizing spiritual awareness none of them are completely wrong none of them are completely right they all have something to learn from and the degree to which we're willing to explore and learn and share is the degree to which we will heal humanity. Um, another favorite one is Neil Donald Walsh. Read every book on conversations with God. Mm -hmm. And um, Vishen Lakhani, Lakh Lakhiani, he is the um, genius behind the Mind Valley Institute. And my favorite book by him is The Code of the Extraordinary Mind. Mm -hmm. um, exploring and knocking your limitations to the ground. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, 
with that, you are a coach and yes. uh, specifically a transition coach. Tell us about your coaching program. What do you do within it? How can someone reach out to you if they needed your coaching services? Um, very simply, go to my web website, www.donnafairhurst.com. It's my name, donnafairhurst.com. Mm -hmm. And when you go there, you get an opportunity to, to uh, uh, for, for just going on the website, you get this manifesting, uh, clearing and manifesting prayer that I told you about. Mm -hmm. There's an opportunity to book a 30-minute complimentary session with me to explore what's going on in your life and whether my program is a fit for you. Okay. I will be sharing that link um, with everyone in the comments. So in case you're watching us uh, on replay, please make sure you comment hashtag replay, but you can look through the comments. The first comment should have the link to, to uh, Donna's uh, website. So Donna, we've reached the end of our interview. I have one last question for you. If we forget everything that you have uh, shared with us and all the amazing gems you have shared with us, what is the one thing you want us to take from today's chat? The power of your word. Your words create your life. So the one, one thing, if you say the word I am, I am, the mm -hmm. I stands for intention. The A stands for awareness and the M stands for manifest. This literally in any language, in any discipline, in any spiritual practice, however you break down I am, you are God Godding. You are calling on the God squad, every one thing that you are spiritually connected to, to bring you more of what you declare yourself to be. So if you say I am mad, sad, tired, angry, blah, 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 anything negative, your angels, your God squad, they're all just going to say, oh gosh, here she goes again. She, we, we really want to help her. We really want to bring her the people, places, miracles, experiences that will grow her life in such a positive way. But she keeps declaring herself to be something that isn't positive. So we can't bring her stuff that is positive until she makes a different choice. So we, we can't stop our feeling. Feeling is a gift from God to allow us to know that we're not in, whether we're in or not in alignment. So when you're feeling something negative, you're sad, you're mad, you're broke, you're, you're tired, you're in a bad relationship, you know, I'm lonely, whatever it is, say it as a feeling. I am feeling sad, mad, tired, lonely. When you say I'm feeling your God squad goes, yes, thank you, God, at last. Now we can bring her the experiences, the cooperation, the calm, the alignment, the people that she needs to change that and make it something better. So when you declare something negative, say, I am feeling it. That's your get out of jail free card. When you're, when you're feeling something positive, declare it through the rooftops. I am happy. I am abundant. I am health. I am joy. I am peace. Whatever the I am is, shout that from the rooftop. Sing it. The negative ones, declare it as a feeling. And if possible, eliminate the word but from your life. It's a, it's a dead energy word. Every time you say but after you've said something, everybody knows it's, it's, it just takes away the energy. I really love being here, Mary, but, whoa, <laughs> You see what I mean? Yeah. It's such a simple word. And we're taught it from the cradle. It's a protection word. And you don't need that protection. You are actually weakening your energy field every time you say it. So either don't say it at all, just I love you, and then go another sentence. Or I love you. However, in this situation, I think we need to speak about something. Or I love you, yet there's more we have to do. So yet, however, and any other positive connector or neutral connector, not but. I wish it could just be taken completely out of every language. <laughs> Thank you so much, Donna. This has been such an amazing talk with you and uh, opened my eyes to a lot of things even about myself. And thank you for, for allowing my grandfather to visit. I, <laughs> that has never happened. 
uh, to me before. So that's that's special. That's something I'm going to to remember very fondly for a very long time. Um, you can call thank on you, him, Mary. You can call on him all the time. You know, and and right. uh, especially when you're feeling feeling you need you need strength. Mm -hmm. He will bring you strength. He will have your back. All right. Thank you so much. And yeah. um, I hope that uh, you have you enjoy the rest of your day or evening. I'm not sure what time it is right now. It's 1.20 in the afternoon. So I will go uh -huh. and have my lunch after this. <laughs> <laughs> so enjoy your lunch. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, to everybody else who's watching, like I said, this is uh, my last interview for season one. I'm hoping to come back with season two and hopefully that should be after I do my summit. So watch out for that on my page. I'm going to be announcing my summit very soon. It's going to be all about imposter syndrome and how we can be able to surpass it so that we can live our best life. Thank you so much to all the guests that have been able to speak to this season. And thank you to Donna for capping this uh, season in such an amazing and spectacular way. I hope that if you're watching on the replay, that you're going to put it in the comment, share it with uh, other people as well. And like she said, her last word, your words create your life. So please, Make sure you watch what you say and how you say it. Bye-bye.